My name's Gaia and in six days time I'm about to graduate. This is the last week that I can say I am a Nottingham Trent University student and what a ride it's been. Over the last four years there's been laughter, tears and a whole lot of sitting in the library and for every academic year at NTU I've reviewed it. I've sat down with you guys and spoken about the highs and the lows of each year. I'm gonna do that again along with the help of some of you guys. So for the last time here is a university review, except this is my overall review of my entire undergraduate experience. So we're going to start off with an easy one. I studied psychology and criminology. So this is Chaucer, which is the main lecture building um, I had most of my seminar and lectures in. For anyone who has had lectures and seminars in Chaucer, you'll know that it's an absolute maze. Like, I'm in fourth year now and I still don't know my way around it, but I'm going to miss this building so much. <laughs> is studying combined honours worth it? I think so. So if you're someone who doesn't know what combined honours means, basically instead of studying one subject you get to study two. So instead of just studying psychology or just studying criminology, I got to study psychology with criminology, which definitely was the right choice for me because you get the chance then to kind of study two different subjects. I remember when I was choosing my undergraduate degree, I didn't know whether I wanted to go down to psychology or criminology. So doing this combined honours degree it allowed me I guess to you know obviously study both try them both out and see which one suited me better so in first year I lived in halls the halls I lived in were NTU owned and they were called Guild Street South which is one of the most popular accommodations you could live in if you want to live in the city centre this is Guild Street South which is the accommodation that I stayed in in first year lots of memories <laughs> Lots of, I guess, good and bad memories. The wind in the footage was too loud in this bit. Basically, I'm just showing you where my first room is in Gilshoot South. My first flat was J18, then I moved over to K30, which is on the other side of Gilshoot South, but here's my first room anyway. Some interesting times in there, a lot of uh, distress, a lot of sleepless nights I had in that room um, because of noise of flatmates. Um, but yeah, <laughs> oh, there's a wasp. On our tour of Gilshoot South, I feel like I can't not mention this gate. This gate has a special place in my heart because of the amount of times I went through this gate to collect Uber Eats and Domino's takeaways, living that student life. <laughs> yeah, this was pretty much a permanent spot for most of the first year. A lot of my student loan was unfortunately wasted on takeaways, which isn't really the wisest choice. I wouldn't recommend it for memories. <laughs> And then in the next two years, I lived in a house. I, I can't really say the next two years actually because part of second and most of third was actually living at home because of the pandemic. But even though I didn't really get to live in those houses as long as I wanted to, I still did get the vibe of what it's like to live in a student house. And I think I still did get relatively enough use out of it, if that makes sense. There's definitely been some ups and downs living in those houses. Um, a lot of interesting stories. This is another thing you guys might have to deal with living in a house, um, even with people that you thought you could be civil with. Some of which you guys will know if you've been following me for a while. I wasn't exactly the most lucky when it came to flatmates for the entire three years. If you're new to my channel and would like to know more about what it was like living in halls or a house, or simply haven't watched previous related videos, I really recommend watching these five videos. They will not only show the footage of the halls and the two houses I stayed in, but will also explain the flatmate situations a bit more. For my fourth year, um, I just lived at home. Because of the fact that I was doing an extension year um, without classes, I didn't need to live in Nottingham and I didn't need to access like lecture buildings. So I just lived at home and then commuted to Nottingham every now and again when I was needed for my part-time job as one of NTU's social media content creators. When it comes to which one I prefer, I don't know, because I feel like both have pros and cons. Like, living in a house is better in some ways because obviously you don't have to share with about 300 people, you're only sharing with like a handful. In my case, I shared with three other girls in second year and then I think it was like five other people in third year, four of those being girls and one was a guy. And even though you are sharing with a lot less people, there are still cons to living in a house, such as, you know, if they're gonna be messy, noisy flatmates, you're still gonna get that regardless of whether, you know, you're living in halls or a house, which is definitely something I experienced. I guess another issue with living in a house is that it's not as secure Yes, you have keys and stuff, but it's definitely not as secure as if you were living in like an accommodation block where 
you've got like a designated security team and stuff. And if you live in a house, you're gonna be slightly far away, so you might have to commute. Thankfully for me, I only had to like walk about 10 minutes. I honestly don't know which one I prefer because even though I did have such a tricky time, that's what I'm gonna call it, tricky time in first year and the whole flatmate situation. I did like how close it was to uni and loved having my own en suite. It felt almost like you're on a residential, I guess, living in halls. It was um, just kind of a surreal opportunity. But then there's aspects of living in a student house that definitely outweigh halls, such as the fact that, you know, it's not gonna be as noisy, hopefully. You do feel like you have got a bit more space. Like, you don't feel like you're just penned in with 300 people and, you know, you can hear what's happening in all other different flats. I had a lot of things going on at 3 a.m. and they weren't always the nicest to hear when you're trying to sleep, such as loud music, blasting, or I guess the odd bits of thumping. <laughs> I'll leave that to your imagination. You can decide what that noise is for yourself. I think overall I probably prefer a house only because you do feel a little bit more independent and you can kind of pretend a bit more that you're a, you know, an adult and you've got your own house, which I, is, I guess bizarre because it's not really your own house and you're sharing a flatmate, but I think house outweighs halls just a little bit. My favourite NT building has to be Arkwright just because of how beautiful and like gothic it is. It makes such a statement on NT campus that you can't miss it. For me personally I'd say Arkwright just because it's really pretty but if I'd have to say like once I really like my lessons in it would probably be more to it. My favourite NT is building. I'm a little bit biased but because I spend the most amount of time in this building and because it is my building for my course has to be the Maudsley building. It's not necessarily the prettiest on the outside but once you go inside it is very pretty. You can go up to the studios, you have kind of like the labs. I spent about half of my life in the Maudsley building so it you know has to be my favourite building to some capacity. I like um, the Global Lounge because the free lunches. But I also quite like the library because I like that building, you know, it's where I study the most. It just kind of relaxes me a little bit, which is a bit weird, especially because I like to study there, but it just does. So I would say it's either between the Student Union or Boots Library, but I do love Boots Library, so I think I would choose that out of all the other buildings. When it comes to making the most of NT's resources, I would definitely say to ask questions because the staff at the university are there to help you. The resources are all there, you just have to have the initiative to ask questions, to sign up for workshops, to go out of your comfort zone and try something new. Make sure you take time to familiarise yourself with what's on offer because I definitely didn't do that, at least properly, for some time. Um, I came to NT thinking I knew what was there and even, you know, now graduating, I'm still discovering some of the amazing opportunities and support that is on offer at NTU. I'd say go to the employability events, um, that's a big thing for me because that's where I found lots of uni jobs. Once you get into like a first uni job, they'll send you so many emails of like other jobs and um, other adverts that are out there. So that'll probably be the biggest thing for me. I think if you want emotional or like personal support, I think it's really good to go talk to your personal tutor or reach out to student support services. They literally help you with so many different things. For example, I managed to even get a dyslexia diagnosis through student support back in first year, which I am so, so, so grateful for. It's given me not only, um, I guess, the resources I need to succeed, but it's given me some like closure knowing why I'm struggling with certain things or like why I learn the way that I do. There's also so much support such as employability support, academic skills support, say if you wanted to get some support surrounding in like an essay or an assignment. I would probably say the careers fair, I'm planning on going to my first one in October, the next time it runs so I can find it for my placement next year. Talk to your course reps, talk to your members of your faculty and your building, definitely ask the student ambassadors, ask your course reps because usually they will have a good idea of kind of like what you can and can access within your actual building and just for your course itself. Also if you're in first year reach out to your cert mentor who's a second or third year undergrad student who's assigned to you to help you throughout your first year just navigate everything and looking back I really wish I had reached out to my buddy a lot more like I think she emailed me but I just didn't email back because I was just too anxious to. Over the last four years the societies I've been a part of are psychology <laughs> Do not do that. <laughs> The societies I've been a part of include Psychology Society, Cocktail Society. In first year I kind of threw myself in. I was part of like Cocktail Society, Spanish Society, Criminology Society, probably a bunch of others as well. This year I joined the Music Society, the African Caribbean Society, 
and also the Design Society. I've been a part of one, which was the Civil Engineering Society, also known as CIVSOC. Women's Welfare. I've been part of the Social Science Society as well as the Spanish Society. Part of the Pride Society, Criminology Society and Spanish Society. I think Gin Society? I can't remember, honestly. I feel like I've signed up to so many different things. I think I signed up to Rock Society as well, but I didn't go and get the like, membership card that you're supposed to because I was just too nervous to. Um, story of my life. I've also been a part of the Student Mental Health Champions, which they're not really a society, they're more of like a network or like community of students who are like passionate about mental health and um, helping others. There are so many other societies at the university, like there's something for everyone and I'm definitely excited to start something new um, society-wise in my fourth year. The best and worst year of my university experience um, I feel like we should end on a high, so I'll start off with worst. I think the worst year of my university experience probably had to be my first year just because there were so many things happening, like so many unexpected negative things. So if you've watched my first year of you, you'll probably already know several of these things. As I mentioned previously, I haven't always had the best luck with flatmates. In first year, I had, I would consider like the flatmates from hell. Not all of them were bad, but there were just a few individuals that just were not respectful and ate my food, were noisy at 4am blasting DMV music when I had to be getting up the next day at 7am. They'd do things like set the fire alarm off, do drugs next door to the point that I could smell it in my room and I was just really miserable. And it wasn't until January that I got to move. Not gonna lie, at the time I didn't feel like NTU supported me. They pretty much told me that I had to kind of deal with it on my own and sort my own accommodation out if I wanted to move. It didn't make me feel as though my university were there for me and I feel like when you're in first year, you're still trying to find your feet, so that definitely wasn't the best thing to happen. Even when we had the whole investigation happened because of the stuff they were doing, nothing kind of came out of it. Another major bad thing that happened in first year was I was experiencing a toxic relationship, which I didn't actually kind of realise I was enduring until February, where everything was just kind of building up and hit a breaking point. For the rest of the year, I didn't really look after myself. I just was in a really bad place mentally because I was trying to deal with what had happened happened to me. After the breakup, I went out a lot to try and make up for the first few months of my university experience because back when I started in Freshers, I didn't really go out at all because of this toxic relationship and because of the horrible flatmates. So I went from going out about like once a month to going out four times a week because I was just really in a bad state mentally. Looking back now, there definitely are healthier ways to handle it. I really wish I had reached out to NTU for support a lot sooner. But yeah, as you can see, that was the best year for me. It's unfortunate that it was my first year because everyone says, oh, your first year is going to be amazing, you know, throw yourself into everything and that was kind of the opposite for me. But when it comes to my best year, I feel like my best year is actually this year, my fourth year, because I've had the freedom just to take a step back, prioritise my mental health and there hasn't been as much pressure. This year has also been the best because I've been able to achieve so many things that I don't think I would have been able to achieve if I'd have just forced myself through third year. Like some personal highlights have been me getting an offer from the University of Cambridge, being one of the six winners of Student Women of the Year, which was a global competition thrown by Uni Days. Another highlight has to be graduating with a 2-1. I'm so happy with that result. My hard work has definitely paid off and it's been amazing also to be able to get involved with so much stuff in the community and societies and things that I didn't have a chance to do in first year when so much was happening so I feel like I've almost been able to take back the uni experience I lost during first year and then the other two years when Covid struck. Something that I would tell first year Gaia is to definitely reach out for support. Gaia I know you're struggling, what you are going through is bad, you shouldn't downplay what you're experiencing either and you are there to help you. Soon you will realise the full scope of support and resources that are available. Also, I would tell First Year Gaia just to throw herself into everything that comes at her. Get involved with like work opportunities outside of my course. Back in First Year, I would have classed myself an extrovert and I would have classed myself as someone who was sociable. But looking back now, there was so much more that I could have got involved with. I do remember me being so anxious to get involved with things such as societies because of the whole thing like, oh, I don't know anyone here. Yeah, just don't be afraid. It's not as scary as you think it is and everyone is so lovely and it's also okay if you don't find your people straight away don't expect yourself to find your friends within the first week of university don't put so much pressure on yourself to have everything figured out in first year you know it all, all works out in the end but we managed to get this i've wanted this since year 10 
So knowing that I finally got through first year with no problems, I've just really enjoyed it. And it's just like a we made it kind of moment. What is my favorite part of my interview experience? I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's definitely one of my favorite NT experiences probably has to be winning the NT Community Award last year. I did not expect that at all. Like I knew the Student Union Awards were a thing, but I guess because I wasn't really that involved with societies until this year, I didn't really know how you could be nominated or like I thought it was just more of a society thing rather than like individuals could get nominated for it as well. Honestly, when I got that email come through saying that I was one of the nominees, it just I I literally couldn't comprehend it at all. I think I really needed it though. I needed that really good moment to happen because third year had been so draining and so tough up to that point and I feel like I needed something positive to keep me going and being like, it's okay, you know, you've got this. So to get nominated for an award, um, especially the community one, to be the only individual among amazing societies and projects, it just made me feel so happy that what I'm doing is helping people. I've loved being able to use my skills and my passions to help the society society such as being part of the students in classroom scheme where I went into an underprivileged school uh, once a week and helped there. Mine's probably my, um, so I'm part of the students in classroom um, opportunity that's been amazing. I've met loads of people through that. My favourite part of my NTU experience has definitely been the people that I've met here at uni. I've made friends here that I definitely believe that will be a part of my life for years to come. I don't think that these are going to be people that I will lose easily at all. These are connections that I will keep for the rest of my life. Um, people that I hope to see like at my wedding, you know, people that I'm going to graduate with. Yeah, I would definitely say it's been the people I've met here. Not even just friends, but I think also some of the teachers or lecturers, just people I've met here in general because I think I've made a lot of very good connections and then also just I really enjoyed my course a lot more than I thought I would. But yeah, there's many things such as being a student ambassador, being part of the entertainment department as well. It's a great way to meet new people and just, you know, makes you enjoy your university experience a bit more. If I did NTU again, something that I do differently is definitely join a lot more societies and throw myself into a lot more. I feel like that only occurred to me towards the end of my university experience when I got a bit more courage and realised that uni does go fast and if you don't get involved, it's gonna fly by before you know it and you won't get to do the things you wanted to do. So I think if I could do it again, I would definitely just sign up to everything, not be so scared of um, not knowing anyone in the room. If I were to do my university experience again and have to experience the pandemic, one thing I'd definitely make sure I'd do was not take things like lectures and in-person teaching like for granted. Once the pandemic hit, I didn't realise how much I missed going to 9am stats lectures, like something that I once hated and literally I would force myself out of bed for was now something that I just wanted more than anything in the world. You're not always going to have this, you know, things can change just in an instant and you don't know when something is going to be the last time you want to experience it. My favourite spot to study on campus has to be probably the library. You have, you know, my laptop and then another computer as well. It's just a bit of a more relaxing environment. It has something for everybody. Um, if you need a quiet place or you need a printer or you don't want to like work in groups, you can rent out a room in the library as well. You go into the library and you go downstairs. That's where they have all the books for design, fashion, art. And then at the very end of the hall, there is a study area, which I don't tend to see a lot of people go in there, but it's actually my favourite part library to study in because they have big tables which again you know space for designers is such a, a key thing. So I would definitely 100% say Boots Library. Either the student union where the cafe is where all the nice plush seating is. For light work I like SU but for deep work I like the Boots Library. Or Goldsmiths Cafe. So this is Goldsmiths Cafe which is another one of my favourite study spots on campus. Unfortunately it's close for the summer so I can't show you inside but I'm gonna miss this one a lot as well. Goldsmiths Cafe for one of my bigger projects I think that was quite cool actually. It's a great place to go if you just want somewhere cosy and aesthetic to study but has plug sockets and also has food so that's a bit of everything really. I think it's room 350 in Monsley. That is my favourite spot to study just because it has a lot of space and usually with my course when I study I'm not just like you know studying I'm also 
um, making things. I'm usually model making. I might be needing to use a 3D printer. I might be needing to cut some cardboard or paperboard or foam board or something because I'm working on a model. If I'm studying with a group of my friends, I might see if there's any free rooms in Newton probably. Or if you're somebody who needs a bit more action, prefers to go to a cafe to have like a coffee while you're studying, um, then there's so many cafes around Nottingham as well. The worst part of my degree was probably statistics. <laughs> I had to do that module that was um, a whirlwind. Let's just say I'm not the best at maths and that was a struggle. Definitely having to do it on my own. My dissertation was the worst. Especially when SPSS, the software that you're supposed to use, decided to hate me and just crash constantly. That wasn't fun. It's been alright. Um, I don't know. It's, it's not been too bad. I can't wait for masters though when I get to specialise a lot more. Assumptions of NTU that aren't actually true. One of the biggest assumptions, mainly because we are in the same city as another really prestigious university, is that Nottingham Trent is a little bit like lower level, lower level university. I think that that's very untrue just because like everything in this world, it's very much dependent on the individual and dependent on. It's, it's quite subjective to you, your requirements, your course where you see yourself and all those things and as well as your uni experience. There's a big stigma on like Russell groups and stuff. If you don't go to a Russell group, your degree is like less than a degree. Yeah. But especially for like undergraduates, it does not matter at all. Obviously it on some like medicine stuff yeah. might be a little bit more important. But for most degrees it makes absolutely no difference. I think the students work super hard. The staff is so passionate. There are so many resources. You know the university is different. It has its own culture, it has its own type of environment. So it's a really great experience in contrast to what some people say. It definitely is not a downgrade. I am so happy that I came here. I have enjoyed myself here and I think anyone who does come here will enjoy themselves and will not see it as a downgrade to me. Also, I'd heard, I don't know if this was just me or if it's like people going to NTU are like stupid and all that. Yeah, and yeah. it's an easy way out. Yeah. Kind of but my god, some of the people I've met here, I'm like, God. Definitely that everyone who goes to NTU just wants to party. Like for me, trust me, I love a good time. I love going on nights out. But I'm also here to study and that's the case for a lot of people. There's so many academic people here, so many amazing staff and alumni. There are people that like love to party but I feel like every university is going to get that and there's so much stuff out of just drinking. But I don't get why that has such a bad way, yeah, I'd say. Because yeah. I really enjoy like not even life just especially during the day. So I really like it, but I don't get why people give it back. Did I prefer university before or after COVID? I feel like overall I probably preferred it before because it felt a bit more like a normal university experience. Even though in some respects I don't really feel like I had the university experience that everyone talks about where university is the best three years of your life. As you guys know now, my university experience was definitely not what I expected. A lot of bad things happened and it's just been crazy. And that, you know, is not even including the pandemic. Even though when everything first went online, felt really scary at the time. There are aspects of online learning that I'm really glad I experienced and I'm really glad has actually been kept even now as we move out of COVID. I've come to really like actually breakout rooms which sounds really odd. I think at the start it seemed a bit overwhelming and you know you're having to get to know Microsoft Teams really fast. Even though I think overall I do prefer it before COVID, I think there are definitely things that the pandemic have taught us about what actually works and what doesn't work with teaching and how to improve it. No, I don't regret coming to NTU or my course, even though I did have a rocky start of my university experience. I think it's definitely changed me for the better. I probably say this a lot, but I am definitely not the same girl I was when I first came to NTU and I'm so glad for that. I wouldn't change it because it shaped me into such a better individual and I'm really happy with where I am at mentally now. When it comes to my degree, I don't regret my degree. Obviously there are aspects that I didn't really care for like some of the modules in first year but I wouldn't say I regret it. It's been really fascinating to be able to learn about criminology for the first time and then learn even more about psychology. So no, I don't regret studying at NTU or doing my degree. I would describe my experience at NTU as unexpected. Probably because everything that I didn't think was going to go wrong went wrong but I wouldn't change it 
for the world. So I've not finished yet, but I'd probably still use the word fulfilling because I feel like I've gotten a lot of opportunities like and work experience done with through the university. For me, it's really been all about independence. I really wanted to do this for a few years. So actually getting the opportunity to be free and independent, I think that's made my whole experience. I really wish I could go back and tell 18 year old guy that everything was going to be okay, that you're going to come out on top and you are going to achieve so many amazing things and you're actually going to be so much better mentally. You're going to learn so much, not only about, I guess, the university and life, but you're going to learn so much about yourself. So yeah, probably unexpected. <laughs> There's just been so much on. If I had to describe my experience at NT with one word, it would definitely be rewarding. It is very rewarding, especially when you see the work you put in and the quality of stuff that you, know, you get out of it, even if sometimes the grid doesn't reflect what you think you deserve just being able to see something that you physically produce through your own hard work is very, very rewarding. I would definitely say it was very eye-opening for me. I'm an international student. You know, back home in my home country, I don't have that many opportunities available to me. But university has really given me the opportunity to try new things, try to reach my potential in so many different aspects, whether that be academically or socially or personally, like so many different things. It's been a really good experience and I'm actually quite upset I only have one year left. Would I do my degree again? I think I would. You know, I think it was really good to do both psychology and criminology. It was a really good opportunity to actually learn about criminology, but also still get to do aspects of psychology that I really love. And also, I guess, work out which subject I prefer slightly more um, for postgrad. Even though there were some modules in first year that I didn't really care for, I am still really grateful that I did them because it's given me a really good foundation in which I can build upon for postgraduate. How do I think NTU could improve when it comes to sporting students? NTU has a lot of processes already that are implemented at university to make sure that you know you're working towards your goals in your degree and in also in your personal life but I would say if anything maybe like some one-to-one -one progress tracking such as you know something with a tutor maybe bi-weekly or once every month that is something you can organize to this date I think it would be quite nice for everybody to have a more personal connection and side to university maybe just increasing the amount of tutorial sessions would be beneficial or increasing the duration of time for each tutorial session could maybe help students on my course feel more supported. For me, I'm a student who lives on campus, so any financial support with things like buses could help me an awful lot. Yeah. I get the bus for an hour every day. I don't think there's enough support for students off of campus. I think they need to improve the whole accommodation system. Say a student is struggling with flatmates. I feel like the way that they handled me with my first flat wasn't right. I hated that they just left me on my own or at least it felt like that. They pretty much told me that I needed to sort it out and I know at university you are supposed to be a lot more independent and adult but you still do need help with things especially the scale of what was happening back then. Like when it comes to the accommodation system um, and the wardens just take a bit of a kinder approach and get a bit more involved in that aspect because it didn't really make me feel supported. But other than that, I can't really fault the other services that I've gone to at NTU. You know, their student support services are just remarkable. I'm so grateful that I got my dyslexia diagnosis through them. I'd say a good mental health support, um, that kind of side of it, because I feel like it's not very straightforward. Like, um, a lot of people don't know where to go. And then bereavement stuff is a bit, I've heard it's not very good either. So maybe that side of it. I know for employability, I've had good support and uh, finance, I uh, had decent support in first year, but it's just kind of been a mental health bit that's been a bit lacking. Final question, <laughs> woo! Would I return to NTU for postgrad study? I think so. Even though I have said I'm not returning for my masters, which is because of the fact that I want to just try something new, try a different city. And also NTU at the moment can't offer me the exact course that I want. Despite that, I am open to coming back for extra postgraduate studies such as their doctorate program. The staff just are always so knowledgeable and friendly and they're always offering to help you out of hours. So I definitely do feel supported academically here and I would love to come back. Like, I'm going to be so sad when I graduate. It's going to be definitely a bittersweet moment because I'll be happy to be moving on to the next chapter of my life, but there is definitely going to be a massive part of me that just doesn't want to leave here ever. The area in my life where I've changed the most has been these four years. So I feel like I attribute NTU with a lot of my growth. Yeah, even though I'm not coming back for my masters, I am open to going back for my doctorate. So who knows, maybe in how many years, maybe like three, four years, you'll see me back in these same walls, the same buildings. <laughs>